Hello, this is Bishop, and this is a test of Autopilot 2019.12.1.1 4B1DD29. Uh, so this is, so I didn't get a chance to do another 8.5 test because I got this software update pretty quickly after 8.5. I've been away on a business trip all week. Uh, I did not get the prompt while I was away, uh, but I did get the prompt pretty much uh, within a couple hours of me parking my car in my garage where my car was able to attach the Wi-Fi. So, sadly, I only got to do one test on 8.5, but I suppose getting only being able to do one test on a particular version because I'm getting the software updates too frequently isn't exactly a bad problem to have. So, we're starting off with standard loop. We'll see how Autopilot acquits itself. Really hugging the inside line. Um, I would say more so than the previous version. Doing a really good job staying within the lines. Ooh, yeah, nice sharp turn. Watch out for kids. That's some pretty good center. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nag, nag. Um, that's some pretty good centering. Um, I would say that's actually even a little bit better than the last version, the neural net that we had in 8.5. In 8.5, it was doing a great job of staying within the lane, but it did so by making sort of small corrections, sharper corrections than previous versions of Autopilot I've noticed would be willing to do. Um, but this one actually just seemed to be steering more assertively and hugging the inside of the line so it didn't have to make those sharp corrections. Uh, it's, it's kind of a minor difference. Uh, we'll have to test it out on more roads and see how things work. But one of the things that I wanted to test out for this particular version was to go through the old loop and see how 12.1.1 handles lane, like splitting lanes. So here's the turn lane that splits off into completely ignored that, that's fine. I wouldn't have expected that much of a problem. Here, of course, where it goes in front of me. Yeah, slows down. All right, we're going to pull in right behind this guy. Seems to be doing perfectly fine with identifying where the lane lines are in this afternoon's sun. All right, so I'm going to turn on autopilot here in this section. So a single lane that's, that converges into our two lanes that converge into a single lane generally don't have issues with that except for the problem I described in the previous video where navigate on autopilot doesn't always realize that that's what happened and when it attempts to merge onto a highway it ends up getting into the fast lane by accident instead. So let's see how things look as we go through here. Now I'm on a Hardware 2 car versus Hardware 2.5 or Hardware 3. Uh, my car was manufactured in December or well I took delivery in December of 2016. Um, manufactured sometime in that vicinity. They seem to have gotten it out to be pretty quick for manufacture. Uh, this one, so this particular version over 8.5 did bring me the ability to view the status of software update downloads. All right, let's see how it goes through here. Nicely done. Let's not run over the jogger. The ability to view the status of software um, updates, the additional Atari games, fake sentry mode, which I refuse to call real sentry mode until it actually records something. Okay, it did not split off into the left lane. That is interesting. Let's see what it does on this one. Give a little tug on the wheel to make it happy. No, 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 no. <laughs> it thought about it. There's a little bit of body language there. Um, but it, it did eventually stay in the lane, although it did touch the solid white line. Um, hard to tell exactly where we stand with this. Okay, okay, I got it. Getting a little freaked out. So, oh, sees the lane line across the road, immediately corrects. That was good. Uh, so as I was saying, I got fake sentry mode because my sentry mode does not record on hardware two cars. Hopefully when we get the hardware three computer upgrade because I did purchase full self-driving um, at the time of delivery. Um, maybe that's something that'll change. I do seem to remember something in the press conference on the hardware three cars about there being a native H265 encoder. So that could be the difference. Um, one of the features I also got in this version is on-route battery warm-up and uh, mention of additional language support. I don't remember if that one was in my previous version notes. Um, I only speak the one language fluently, so it's not too much of a concern for me. Took that tunnel like a champ. That was really good. It didn't come too close to the wall. That's actually an area where autopilot makes me a little bit nervous sometimes. Uh, so we'll continue on this little back road and see how it goes. Yeah, doing a really good job. Yeah, I'll be so happy when uh, we finally get the ability to do navigate on autopilot on local roads and we can deal with things like intersections and stop signs and stoplights, but sadly, not quite yet. 
Okay, so we come up across, upon some pretty curvy parts here coming up once we get past this light and over the crest of this hill. So I've been testing from time to time. I still have not been able to get the auto steer stoplight warning to go off. Um, but at the same time, I'm also not willing to run a red light. It's kind of like the automatic emergency braking. It's really only so much I can safely do to test these features to see if they work. Um, I suppose with the AEB, I could do something like set up cardboard boxes or something I could run into without damaging the car, but eh, yeah. All right, yeah, that's the only annoying thing here. So we, so we don't have great GPS data for this section car is definitely still not observing street signs. That is, it'd be nice when we finally get the speed limit sign detection. That was a great feature on Hardware One. It was very impressive when it would pick up some temporary road work sign that was shaped and had the same font as a conventional speed limit sign and changed the speed limit as a result of that. All right, let me get to the left here. So it went fine through there, no issues. And I've got to re-engage the autopilot once I get lined up in this stretch. Interesting, the bicyclist did not show up on the instrument cluster display. I would have expected him to. So we are set for 40 miles an hour. This is a 35 mile per hour section. Five miles per hour over, which is pretty standard for literally how everyone drives in the US. That is so common that I remember as a, as a teenager who was a relatively new driver. All right, whoa, oh, interesting. Okay, so the car actually, I don't know if I'd call that a freak out necessarily, but it realized that it was about to go into two lanes and in order to make sure that it got into one lane, it actually applied the brake pretty sharply. Okay, so after the car in front of me makes its turn and the pathway becomes clear. This is something I've noticed on all autopilot versions. Um, it takes a while for the car to basically start to re-accelerate back up to normal speed, longer than a normal driver would take. Long enough that if someone behind you were impatient, they might honk at you wondering why you're not going because the path is obviously clear. This is something I would like them to address and, and get better. Uh, another similar area where I've seen autopilot sometimes be a little bit on the sluggish side is when in stop and go traffic, when the traffic comes to a complete stop and then it starts to go again, sometimes it leaves a, a large gap in between you and the car in front of you before it actually resumes. All right, so it's got to recenter on the lane because the lanes were slightly offset there, no problem. And this is actually going to take us into the turn lane that I want to go on. So let's, so I'm going to notch down the speed and let's see what happens on this turn lane. Uh, 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 it's a little wide. So I took over right there, but that was doing a pretty good job. But since there is traffic and it was coming a little bit close to the line, I went ahead and took over. That is a sharper turn than we should reasonably expect that autopilot would be taking care of in this version. So what I'm gonna do is get onto the highway eastbound, which will take us back close to where we started. Unfortunately, I'll be subjecting myself to rush hour traffic, but that's a great, great opportunity to test out uh, Navigate on Autopilot. So my current settings, which I'll go ahead and confirm since I haven't looked at them since the update went in. Uh, customized Navigate on Autopilot. So, um, start every trip, yes. Uh, Speed-based lane changes set to average. Require confirmation, no. Lane change notification, chime because for some reason that I don't completely understand, hardware two cars don't get the vibrate steering wheel confirmation. The reason that I don't understand that is because hardware two cars actually do have a vibrating steering wheel. We get vibrating steering wheel as part of lane departure notification. So I don't know why we don't get that as part of nav on autopilot since the wheel is obviously capable of vibrating. But yeah, so far um, everything looks good no issues with um, anything that it was doing. The lane splitting seems like it's a little bit better, um, but we're definitely gonna have to do more testing on this. All right, so picking up where we left off, uh, I've gotten back on the highways, a lot of traffic, nav on autopilot, let's see. Is this guy letting me in? Yes, he is, very nice of you, thank you. So I went ahead and tapped the accelerator just slightly 
to give myself a little bit of a speed boost. But we'll see how Nav on Autopilot handles lane changes after this. Other than that, I didn't have to disengage. And that's something that I do from time to time. Um, you know, in instances where Nav and Autopilot's being a little bit hesitant because there's a car in the adjacent lane that's just a little bit too close for its comfort. Um, if you go ahead and tap the accelerator, all right, see what it does. Yeah, I'm, I'll skip it. Okay, it was gonna make the lane change, and I think it was gonna be safe because that car was slowing down, but eh, just wanted to be a little on the safe side. All right, let's go again. So yeah, sometimes navigate on autopilot can be a little bit hesitant if there's a car a little bit too close to your tail. Um, and in those instances, oh, yeah, route based lane change. You know what, I'm just gonna initiate it a little early since that lane's gonna start going faster. So we'll just fall behind this car. You can go ahead and tap on the accelerator and the car will just um, accelerate into the lane change as long as there's sufficient room on either side. So the exit that I'm approaching is an exit that traditionally the car has had trouble with. It doesn't seem to understand where the exit is. Uh, this is the exit that I actually, in the previous video, indicated that I have op uh, updated on uh, openstreetmaps.org. So whether this has anything to do with my update or whether it doesn't, I'm curious to see whether or not the car successfully takes this exit. So let's see what happens when we get closer. All right, we're approaching the exit. And the car, well, it did a good job with the lane splitting, but once again, it still doesn't seem to understand that that's where the exit is. So I have to take over because it won't cross the solid white line. We've already passed it. Okay, so still the same problem with the exit. Um, so nav on autopilot, you know, still is heavily reliant on GPS data and the GPS data is not necessarily accurate. So that's still an issue. You're really jamming on the brakes there, aren't you? Okay, let's get into a clear path. I like how it's going slow because it sees the turn, even though I'm just on adaptive cruise control. All right, so we'll go ahead and turn autopilot on here and let's see how it handles stopped car in front. Pretty well. Seems to have recognized that there was a car in front of us from pretty far off. Interesting, I'm not seeing, oh, there's the adjacent car, okay. Hmm. Instrumentation visualization seems to be a little bit different in this version. I don't know, we'll have to play around with that some more. But um, yeah, I think that's good for right now. See, there's that big gap I was talking about. Yeah, that's huge, come on. Catch up. Yeah, there was no reason for it to leave such a large gap in between the cars. Somebody thought I were driving, they would think I'm snoozing at the wheel. So I've initiated that lane change and went ahead and got over. I do actually like using um, autopilot and auto steer for lane changes on local roads because I feel like it's, uh, it is actually pretty confident in not doing something stupid. And you know, cars can pretty much be coming at you from any direction in situations like this, so. That's oh, right. All right, well that covers everything that uh, I think we wanted to test for this session, so thanks for watching.